an hour and a half of Black Ops 2 zombie details that you may have missed? Let's go. Let's start off with everyone's favorite map, Transit. Once you have activated power in Transit and you head back to the bus depot, as you were wandering through the terminal, you can hear some announcements in the background. This is something that you probably heard of, but never really paid too much attention to what was being said. The red, red zone, zone is for is loading, loading and unloading, unloading of passengers, passengers only. only. No, no parking, parking is allowed in the red zone. zone. Cleanup Clean required in the, in the men's, men's restrooms. restrooms. Station, Station personnel, personnel, please, please report, report to the men's, men's restrooms. restrooms. Speedway's, Speedway's bus, bus lines does not allow solicitation in its waiting areas. Please, please do, do not give money to pet peddlers. All persons waiting in the Speedway's bus lines terminal must be holding a valid ticket. For your safety, please stay clear of the mechanical repair areas. All children under the age of 17 must be accompanied by an adult. Bathroom stall fraternization is strictly prohibited. Speedway's bus line personnel are patrolling at random intervals. There is no sleeping allowed on the bench seating. Please do not block the aisles with personal belongings. Please alert station agents to unattended baggage or packages. And a cool interesting side note to go off of that, the bus station and the bus in transit are actually based off the real life counterpart. Sometimes occasionally you can hear this quote from Ted. Welcome aboard. Please have a seat. Thank you for choosing Consolidated Coach Corporation bus lines. We know it's a big decision who you ride with, and we are privileged to have been chosen. New route announcement engaged. Now approaching Consolidated Coach Corporation bus depot. And the Consolidated Coach Corporation is actually the Greyhound bus lines that we know today. The Southeastern Greyhounds lines started in 1926 as the Consolidated Coach Corporation. So a lot of the ways the bus looks and the whole bus station in general are all inspired by the old school Greyhound bus lines. And I did find some old Greyhound bus terminal announcements from like the 1940s and 50s. There's really not too much of a connection with this and zombies. But since you got to hear the zombies version of the PA announcements, I thought it would just be really cool to show you guys the real life counterpart. The coach operator will be at the entrance door to take your ticket. Lynchburg coach now boarding at gate number two. All aboard, please. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? For the comfort of all passengers, cigar and pipe smoking are prohibited on board our buses. Federal regulations permit cigarette smoking only in the last three rows of seats. Thank you for observing these rules while aboard your bus. Relax, enjoy your trip, and thank you for going Greyhound. Now also in Spawn and Transit, you have a bunch of posters on the wall. You can see them all in the main area of Spawn and also through the door that you open with the turbine. And all of these posters seem to have some real life counterparts or be based off of some real life stuff. Like for an example, let's take this pylon poster that has power on it with some red numbers in the bottom right that I can't really make out. Maybe my eyesight's just too bad, or maybe I'm just turning into an old boomer and also this logo in the bottom left. Now naturally, of course, knowing what we know that the pylon stands for, the whole Easter egg thing, but if we take all that away and we just look at the bottom left, that logo looks oddly similar to the Office of Civil Defense's logo, which was an agency of the United States Department of Defense from 1961 to 1964. It was eventually renamed in 1972 and then was abolished in 1978. And all of its duties were eventually given over to FEMA. So maybe it's just a far stretch, but those two logos look oddly similar. And another poster that you can see on the wall in Spawn is this Atomic Frontier Days poster that says Nuke Donkey on it and has just a giant ass sitting right there in the middle. This one is very obviously based off the Atomic Frontier Days, a new light on the old frontier, published all the way back in 1948. So if you'd like to buy a pristine copy of this, you know, just shell out $475 and it's all yours. Another poster that we see in Spawn says Sedan, an entirely new way of moving. And I really couldn't find the direct inspiration for this image. I found a bunch of old school 1950s like vintage Sedan posters that look oddly similar to it, like this dollar for dollar Pontiac one, but I couldn't find the exact one that it was based off of. So if you happen to find it, please let me know because I think the inspiration for a lot of the things we see in zombies is very, very interesting and awesome to find out. Another poster that you will see in Spawn is the Ride the Bus poster, and I believe this is an inspiration off of, I think this is like a newspaper article, that's title was Congratulations to the Atlantic Greyhounds Lines, and it has this very iconic Greyhound bus depot image. And it looks like Treyarch saw this image, said, hey, that looks dope, let's take that, put a bus in front of it, and there you go. 
Also, there's this one interesting poster in Spawn that when you look at it, it's pretty cool because it will give you 10% off your entire purchase at Gamersubs if you use code CRAZY. And I'm even so generous that I will leave a link to it down below in the description. So make sure to use code CRAZY at checkout, get that 10% off. Now we also have a couple other pictures. If you go to town and you go into the bar, you're going to see a close up image of an ear with what looks like a knife in between it. And this is actually a much bigger picture in real life. This is just an up close section of that picture. The entire picture is the Garden of Earthly Delights and is much, much bigger than the one you see in the bar. And next to that, we also have an image of what looks to be people like taking over a castle and setting it ablaze. And similar to the ear one, that one is also a small part of a much bigger picture called Tondal's Vision, which is this weird image that I can't even begin to describe. And the last one we have is based off of the real life Tower of Babel painting, which knowing now that we know transit, the Tower of Babel Easter egg, it all kind of fits together. And this very same image can also be found in yet another area. So up behind the bar, up in this two-story building, if you have a sniper rifle or if you can go no clip, you can actually see the Tower of Babel located back here as well. Next up, if you are playing with more than one player, because you have to for this next part, and you are taking the bus and one of you goes down, you can revive the other one from pretty much anywhere on the bus. The bus mechanics are a little janky at some points, and this just happens to be one of them that works in your favor. Also, I'm a huge fan of creepiness in zombies. I love when Treyarch adds like creepy sounds. Transit doesn't really have too much of that, but one of the ones it does have is if you are walking through the cornfield, you can hear a bunch of like what seems to be scuttling on the floor and some very, very creepy laughter and giggling. So like I said, Treyarch, put more of that in your games because I love it. I love just walking into an area and just hearing something really creepy that makes you just turn around and look and get scared and then pee your pants. I only did that once or twice. Another little interesting fact is all the zombies wear clothes related to a mental asylum, whether it's a straitjacket, medical gowns, work clothes that identify that they work at the Hanford Sanatorium. But one interesting fact about all that is on the uniforms, sanatorium is misspelled. Now, without looking it up, I would never be able to spell this correctly, but the I is misplaced. It is not where it should be. This is how to spell sanatorium, and this is how they spelled it in-game. Treyarch, do better, or idiots like me are going to overanalyze literally everything in your game. Now, usually I don't like to include radios and stuff like this in these kind of videos because I want to make an entire video just doing nothing but radios, but this one requires like a step or two to actually turn it on, so I thought, hey, it counts, and they are very, very interesting radios. So you want to make your way all the way to farm. You don't want to have power turned on yet. You want to come into this house and activate this television. And to activate it, you just hold F until you hear this sound. Once you have done that, you want to go turn on power and then come back to this television, activate it again, and you're going to hear all of these radio broadcasts. What has occurred cannot be undone. However, I realize the calculations were made in haste and could potentially threaten the entire globe. That was not the intent. I considered a possible plan B should this occur, but this plan would consist of creating global polarization devices that would... It appears I have difficulty speaking... Devices when the power... Shut the power... Me... Hello, hello! This is Jackass Flats calling any human community within broadcasting distance. We're located at standard map coordinates, 37 degrees, 07 north, 116 degrees, 03 west. This is a warning to anyone contacted by a group of mysterious voices. Several of our party began to hear the voices, and their competing instructions and incompatible demands drove a wedge down the center of the camp. Half of the camp is carrying out the demands of only through electronics. This voice is a big, long, and its ultimate goal is unclear. The other voice cannot be heard by humans who have not been on the long madness this way lies. 
Neither of these instruction sets will understand. Those of us who have not chosen a side have been hunted by both sides, seeking to force us to assist them. Oh God, they found Who's there? Yes, I can hear you. Huh? Of course I have. There's, there's nothing else. No, I, I won't do that. How do I know you're not lying? You, you can be making all that up. Huh? Well, sure, that, that only makes sense. Dude. You know what? But... No, no, I see. Sure. Really? But they're my friends. Yes. Of course I see now. I'll do it. I'll do it for you. For you and the flesh. Hello? Hello? Are you there? We have activated the spire as you instructed, but the shamblers are swarming our location, and we can't hold out against their superior numbers for long without aid. Hello? Please, come in. It is vital that you instruct us on that... You're so smart, huh? <laughs> you think you can manipulate everybody into doing what you want, but we know the truth. <laughs> you calculate works and you snitch their agents? Hmm? You mean to destroy this planet and kill us all? <laughs> We're not gonna help. No way, no how. So yeah, you keep talking. But no one's gonna really hear you because we're destroying everything. Everything electronic is done with this evil radio box thing. Voice! Come in, unidentified electronic voice! We've been attempting to activate your spire as instructed, but one of our members began hearing the other voice you warned us about. He turned on the rest of us and shot one member of our crew and wounded another before we restrained him. Hello? Hello? Damn this thing! Why doesn't it answer when we call it? Hello? Very, very interesting radios that give you a lot of cool information on the events that took place before transit. Next up, we have the sniper reflection. So if you have a sniper rifle and you look at the reflection of the scope, Allegedly, you can see what appears to be transit either before the bombs fell or transit during its day cycle. If you want more information on the whole cut content day and night cycle of transit, check out my video about Black Ops 2 cut content. Transit had a lot of cut content, and I go into more detail about the whole scope reflection thing. But if you have a sniper scope, more preferably the Beretta, it's a lot bigger. Allegedly, you can see what looks to be transit before the bombs fell or during the daytime. Without all the fog, I should make that clear, because it is during the daytime. You know what I mean. Once you have power turned on and you come over to the pylon, you're going to see a bunch of Morse code being blinked at you. I don't understand Morse code, so I had to look up what this actually said, but there are seven Morse code messages and they read like this. Stay close to me. Knowledge is power. Energy can only be transformed. The future is ours to destroy. Help me so I can help you. Go to the light and we shall prevail. I feel like a lot of people in the zombie community have literally learned Morse code just to decode some of Treyarch's messages. Now let's move on to the music easter egg. The music easter egg as of now will play the song Carry On by Clark S. Nova, but previously it used to play a lot more. And if you want more information on that, again, go watch my Black Ops 2 cut content video. But there are three teddy bears located around the map. One is located in spawn right outside of the starting room. The next one is located in the farmhouse on a mattress on the second floor of the house. And the third and final one is on a cushioned chair in the bar next to the billiard stable. Once you activate all three, the song Carry On will start playing. Like a dream where I'm falling, calling out my resistance is silent. With Transit, we got introduced to the bank and the whole point system. One thing a lot of people might have forgot if you don't really play Transit with friends like I do because I don't have any is that you can also share points. If you have the Galva Knuckles and you come over here to these set of keys and you punch them, you will be given the option to give a friend 1,000 points. Once you do that, there will be a money drop and a friend can just go up and pick it up. And also very similar to that, once you make your way into the bank, you can deposit as much money as you want and you can also withdraw as much money as you want. I believe the cutoff is 100,000, but still, walking into any zombies game with like 10,000 or more points, you're set. 
Now say you didn't know all that and you're like, hey, I want to get to town as fast as possible. If you don't know this, and you just haven't played enough transit, there is a shortcut. As you leave the diner on your way to the farmhouse, on the left, right next to this truck, there will be a nice, beautiful little shortcut that will take you directly to the town. It's very easy to miss, and if you don't know what you're looking for, you'll probably end up in farm without having realized you passed right by it. Next up with transit, we also got introduced to double pack a punching. So a lot of weapons that are only in Black Ops 2 and not like ones that were in Black Ops 1 can be double pack a punch. For example, one of my favorite ones to double pack a punch is the Executioner. So once you pack punch regularly for 5,000 points, you won't be given the option. It won't tell you that you can double pack a punch. It'll just say pack punch your weapon for 5,000, but it actually only costs 2,000 to repack punch. And doing that will give you random attachments. Unfortunately, you can't do it to the Barret, which really, really sucks. But a lot of the Black Ops 2 only weapons can be double papped and be given random attachments. Also in transit, we got introduced to the fridge. This is located in the farmhouse and you can go up to it and store any weapon you want. Well, when I mean any weapon, I mean certain weapons. You can't put the ray gun or anything like that in there, but you can put the AK-47, the Barret, and you can put it in the fridge and store it for a later game or store it for a different map. So you can put it in the fridge in transit and pick it up in the fridge in Die Rise or Buried. And we'll talk more about that once we get to those other maps. Again, with transit, we got introduced to the Avogadro. And with the Avogadro, we got the whole EMP ability. So the Avogadro actually has the ability to EMP the bus. So you can make the bus dead stop, similar to if you threw an EMP grenade at it. Now, if you wanted to get the bus to restart, say you're about to die, and you have a turbine on you, you can place the turbine down and it will restart the bus and the bus will keep moving again. Or just to skip all that, don't throw EMP grenades around the bus and don't let the Avogadro shock it. But speaking of the bus, one of the coolest parts about the bus is pissing off the bus driver. Not only does he give you some of the most hilarious quotes that you will ever hear in zombies. Stay behind the yellow lines at all times or you'll be sorry, asshole. Keep f***ing with me. See if I don't crash this bus and kill you all. Hey, asshole, I'm telling you to stop or I'm driving you off a cliff. F*** you. Now I am not stopping. You get your ass off my bus. Door privileges have been fucking revoked. But he can also throw you off the bus, lock it, and skip destinations. All you have to do is shoot him or punch him enough times to start hearing some of these quotes, and that'll happen. Now, one cool thing that you can do in transit is you can turn off the power. But did you guys know that you can also turn on perks again without having to turn on power? All you have to do is have a trusty turbine, place it down next to the perk, and you will have access to that perk. Normally, if you turn on power and you already have a perk bot, that perk just loses its effect. But if you have the turbine, you get to keep it. And talking about the whole turning off things and EMPs and stuff, you can also EMP a zombie. So once you spawn in on transit, you're going to see the zombies kind of just sitting there motionless as if they're sleeping. And you can actually wake them up if you get too close to them, you run and or you shoot. But if you're just walking around, they're going to stay asleep. You can recreate that very same ability if you have EMPs. All you have to do is EMP the zombies and just don't run or shoot or get close to them and you have a stunned zombie for a while. And this can be very, very useful because Treyarch said, hey, we don't want you to have crawlers ever again. And if you don't feel like dealing with the runner, you can always just EMP a zombie and deal with that instead. Also with Black Ops 2, we got introduced to persistent perk upgrades, which are tiny little upgrades that you can get by doing random things throughout zombies. I'm just going to go over them real quick to keep this video not as long. So I will leave a link in the description to a more in-depth video. You have a Quick Revive perk, which allows you to revive players twice as fast. You have a Juggernog perk, which gives you double the health. There is one for extra headshot damage. There is a discount version of Tombstone. There is a Steel Barricades one, which doubles the time that it takes for zombies to rip off the boards. There's an Insta-Kill Pro one, which makes you invincible and any zombies that hit you automatically die. There is the most famous one, the ray gun off the Olympia. Eventually, if you buy the Olympia enough times, you'll get the ray gun. There is PhD Flopper, which is only available on Buried, but it's not full PhD Flopper. You will still die from cooked grenades and fall damage. There is a better mystery box weapons, which just gives you a better chance to get better weapons in the mystery box. There is a refund on perks one, which will give you a thousand points per buying a perk. There is a half off one where all the players can earn a 50% discount on all items during a double points. There's long shot sniper one, which will give you more points per kill with sniper rifles. There's also double pistol points, which will give you double the amount of points that you get when you are using a pistol. And like I said, if you want more information on how to exactly get these and everything else, link to that will be down below in the description. Also on transit, as much as we hate denizens and how it's just one of the worst things to have ever been introduced in zombies, they are somewhat useful. 
even if just a tiny bit. They can be used to teleport around the map. Once you have power on and you come up to one of these street lights and you have a denizen coming at you, he will jump off of your head and dig a tunnel. And if you jump through said tunnel, you will randomly teleport to a different spot on the map. And this is very helpful, but also very frustrating because sometimes if you want to get to like a certain location, you're going to be doing this multiple times before you actually get teleported to that spot. Now, next thing is not really confirmed to be true. At least I've never seen it officially confirmed, but I choose to believe it's true because every time I do it, it works. If you are sitting on the bus and you are waiting for Ted to move, all you have to do is go to one of the four mattress thingies on the ground and stand up and crouch multiple times. And once you do that, Ted will sound the horn and he'll take off. And this works every single time I've ever done it. So if you are tired of waiting on Ted to move his ass, just go up to one of these cushions, stand up, then crouch, stand up, then crouch, as if like you're trying to tell someone you're friendly in Minecraft, and Ted will eventually start moving the bus. A little helpful tip that I don't think enough people know about. Now, say you're bored and you're like, hey, I want to go to the diner in transit, and you make your way to the diner, you can actually hear the transit load screen music just playing peacefully in the background. Well, as long as you don't have any zombies and people dying on you next to you, then it'll be peaceful. I feel like I don't really need to include this, but a lot of people would probably yell at me if I didn't. Nocturne Toten is actually in transit. As you are going from farm to power on the right hand side of the corn maze, you will see these kind of cars piled together. That's your cue to enter the corn maze. As you do that, just follow my path, and I'm pretty sure everybody knows how to get to Nocturne Toten. But in case you don't, follow my path, take a left here, and you're going to end up in Nocturne Toten. Now, unfortunately, you only have the spawn area. You can't go up the stairs or anything, but it's still a nice little cool Easter egg that you're going to have to go to if you're trying to build like the jet gun or the nav table. Now, a little Easter egg that probably a lot of people may not know of is if you come to the outskirts of town and you come up to the Forest Cafe, right underneath it, you can see some words very, very faintly, I might add, but it does say a good place to dine but the inn in dine is actually kind of scribbled out so it says a good place to die. But you really need to be like looking at it to actually understand and see what it says because it's so hard to read. One of the more well-known Easter eggs is if you are at the diner, the only lights that are lit up on this giant sign spell out now die and also on the diner itself it says die and right underneath it it says on for you. Everyone probably knows about this but what kind of list about transit would this be if I did not include it? And speaking of signs, there is also one in town that reads Moon. Can you take a guess as to what that stands for? And one of the things that caused so much speculation about the infamous bus route B is actually right here in spawn. It says bus route A and then it gives all the times and then it says B and it also gives a lot of the times. If you want to know more about the infamous bus route B, check out my cut content video that I keep referencing. Its link will be down there below. But yes, Bus Route B was eventually at one point in time going to be an actual thing. And the last thing about transit that I have for you is the little flush sound that you hear whenever you drop down the outhouse at power. Now let's head over to Die Rise. Now Die Rise didn't really have as much as Transit did, but it still had a fair bit of interesting things. Loading up Die Rise on its comic screen, you will see Great Leap Forward Province 22 Die Rise. The Great Leap Forward is a real life event led by the Chinese Communist Party from 1958 to 1962. It was led by your boy, Chairman Mao Zedong. And to break it down in simple terms, it was pretty much the forced industrialization of China. And it really didn't go so well, considering that 15 to 55 million people ended up perishing. But the reason I bring this up is because in Kino der Toten on the Wii version, you can activate a radio that references the Great Leap Forward. Calculation that every worker will build one meter of 
canal, and the project will end in three months. Yet it actually took more than 10 years to finish the canal. During the Great Leap Forward, factory workers' hours were doubled, and machines began to work non-stop. They were not even allowed to stop for maintenance and repairs, and so soon began to fall apart. Factories were ruined. At the same time, Mao announced another target for the Great Leap Forward. Steel production was to be doubled within one year. That production was traction not only from heavy industry complexes, but also from small furnaces and villages. As a result of communist ideology, Mao believed that workers' power held a magical force. With that decision, tens of millions of Chinese set out to produce steel by amateur methods. Everything made of iron they could find, from doorknobs to saucepans, was melted down in primitive furnaces in an effort to produce steel. Women cut off their hair and mixed it with the clay in the furnaces. And I know I showed you guys that in the previous video, but it relates to Dai Rise, and I think it's just really interesting, so I thought I should show you again. Now, one cool thing about Dai Rise is if you're looking outside the map in the distance, you can actually see the Jin Mao Tower. And in real life, the Jin Mao Tower is also in Shanghai, China, in the Pudong District. Now, if you look at them side by side, you can definitely tell just how crazy similar they are. And speaking of similarities, on Dai Rise, you can find this mural that shows a city skyline. And in this mural in the back, you can see the Jin Mao Tower as well. Well, if we take a look at the real life skyline, it looks eerily similar. And it's insane with how close this is to the real life counterpart. Dai Rise has a decent amount of perks, but one perk that is on the map that you sadly cannot get is PhD Flopper. If you take the big elevator out of spawn, as you are taking your terrifying flight down, you will get a little glimpse of PhD Flopper down the hallway. Treyarch really put this on the map as a big middle finger to everyone. One cool thing about Dai Rise is that if you're playing as Samuel Stoolinger, due to his history of him eating zombie flesh, you can hear the zombies groaning and trying to talk to you as you play the map. <laughs> So I really like what Treyarch did there by giving certain characters interesting little gameplay elements. Now in zombies, not all of the zombies are equal. I know, right? The SDC zombies, the ones that are in uniform, have a little bit more health than regular zombies. And you can see this on round one. On round one, a regular zombie is only going to be a one knife, but these SDC zombies will be a two knife. And man, the amount of times that I've been double hit by these guys because I forget that little bit of information is just way too many. Now there is a way to get a free perk on Dai Rise, and it's very, very easy. All you have to do is wait for a jumping jack round and end the round with a 100% accuracy. 
A lot of people seem to think that you can't shoot at all, but that's entirely incorrect. All you have to do is make sure you have 100% accuracy by the end of the round. And you can do that by not shooting at all, just by knifing or using the trample steam. But if you do shoot, make sure it counts, because if you miss even once, you will not get that free perk. And I really kind of like this on Dare Eyes because it's so easy to get all the perks. Even though there's not really that many, it's still incredibly easy to do. Another little feature that I think is kind of useless on Dare Eyes, like I see where they were going with it, but... It really is kind of useless. You can call the elevators. As you take the big elevator down from spawn, you will run down this hallway and you can see a bunch of little keys littered all over the ground. If you pick up one of these keys and you take it over to an elevator, you can put it in the key slot and that'll call an elevator down. And the reason I don't like this is because you still have to wait for the elevator to go down if you want to jump on it. I find it much more important to be able to ride the elevators than to buy whatever's on it. Maybe this feature would be a little bit better if the elevator went all the way down so you could jump on it, but just stopping right there in front of you is very, very annoying. Because we all know the elevators in Die Rise are, are one of the most annoying aspects, and this key thing helps a little bit, but not a lot. Especially considering the fact that if you want another key, you have to go all the way back to that area to pick up another one. Now there is a bank and a fridge in Die Rise, and it's right next to power. These little shower areas act as the bank. You can deposit and withdraw all your money, and the fridge is literally on the other side of that wall. You can place whatever you want in there as long as it'll let you, as long as it's not too powerful of a gun. You can place a bunch of stuff in there and pick it up on a different playthrough and or on a different map. Now there are also some TV messages that you can hear as you're playing the map. All you have to do is go up to one of the numerous TVs that are on the map, hold down the F or the use button depending on what console you are playing on, and give it a little bit of time, then let go, and then activate the TV again, and the messages should start playing. Now you do have to occasionally hit the TV again to make sure it keeps playing, and I kind of like that a little bit because sometimes if you're trying to activate a radio, a zombie will come and you'll have to run away and you won't be able to hear the rest of the radio. So I do like how you have to activate the TV every now and then to keep it playing. So that way you can activate it when you're safe and like there's no zombies near you. But I'll shut the hell up and I'll let you listen. Attention all on this channel. This is George Barkley, former assistant director of the CDC facility in Druid Hills, Georgia. Prior to the destruction of our headquarters, our research found evidence that contaminants are now infecting the very air we breathe. As such... Exposure of some sort appears inevitable for all survivors. Symptoms are variable, but most subjects display short-term memory loss, psychosis, delusion, and paranoia. Short-term memory loss has also been reported, but as of yet, I have been unable to confirm this. We advise all individuals to monitor their fellow survivors for signs of the above symptoms. Paranoia in particular. Ask yourself. Are those closest to you really who you think they are? Are they following their own secret agenda? Are they perhaps plotting against you? The dangers presented by such symptoms cannot be overstated. It was with deep sadness that I myself was forced to euthanize 14 members of my own team. My condolences to their families. I hope this message serves as a warning to all survivors. We must all do whatever it takes to ensure our future as a species. Thank you. If there's anyone out there, please respond. I desperately need help. The others left me and I'm alone and frightened. Help! I tried to do it, to do it right, but the others, they weren't missing. This peace comes here. This peace comes there. I couldn't do it on my own. <laughs> I need help. survivors on site. Broken Arrow is not viable for new FOB. Uh, that's a negative, sir. 
Records appear to have been destroyed in a fire prior to the facility being overrun. Sir, we believe staff may have been trying to destroy evidence implicating them in the outbreak. Understood, sir. Confirm drop in T-5. Retreating to safe distance. For anyone listening, we have food, water, and medical supplies. Enough to last several years. Now, one thing that I hate about Die Rise is if you go to a certain section of the map, there's no way to get to the previous one without going all the way around the map. Well, there is a way to somewhat alleviate that if you have a trample steam. I found this amazing video that gives you a bunch of really good trample steam jumps that you would have never thought of. So I'm going to let you guys watch this because I, I learned a lot from this video. So hopefully you guys learned some new trample steam spots that are really going to help you out. Also in the comic book of Die Rise, if you look on the right hand side, you will see the outline of a head. Now whose head this is? Your guess is as good as mine, but I still thought it was interesting enough to point out. And one thing I did as I was walking around Die Rise looking at literally everything was translate almost everything that could possibly be translated. And I found a couple interesting things. There are tons of do not urinate signs located all throughout the map that I never noticed until now. And if you translate it, it literally translates to no pissing here. And I had a good, a good little laugh once I read that. And if you happen to be on top of this building where the giant dragon is, and you have a snipe rifle and you look all the way out here, you will see two signs way off in the distance. This one translates to zombie bank, and the one directly next to it with the old guy doing some funky dance moves translates to black pill vitamins for immortality. One thing I did find scattered throughout Die Rise are these various tanks, and on the bottom of them has some Ukrainian writing. And if you translate it, it translates to control disymmetric point, and then usually the bottom will translate to like little children or kids or something like that, but that's not exactly correct. That bottom part is the name of a small town located very close to Chernobyl. And there is a real life version of this sign that someone was able to find, and it was just so cool that I had to show you guys. So I don't really know if Treyarch meant to put this in the game or if this was just leftovers from a different map or campaign or something like that, but I still thought it was cool enough to show you guys. Now, the last thing I got for you is going to be the music Easter egg. There are going to be three teddy bears located around the map, and all you got to do is hit all three, and you do not have to do it in any order whatsoever. The first one is located over here next to the SVU. This is in the same building as Spawn. The next one is in the upside down Buddha room next to the Alledge. The last one is going to be next to the power switch, and once you hit that, We All Fall Down by Kevin Sherwood will start playing. Now heading over to Nuketown, which had the least amount of information out of every single map, but it still had a fair bit, there is the most famous Moon Easter Egg. As you progress through the rounds, if you come to this TV and you listen at the start of a round, you can hear audio clips from the Moon Easter Egg, because we do know that as Nuketown is taking place, Moon is also taking place at the very same time. So here are some of the audio clips from the Easter Egg that you can hear. I know I should have invented an egg-moving robot. Stupid Maxis. This is rules. What is stupid accent? <laughs> Logan. Teddy. Password? He's a liar. I'm not, but that's why no one would guess it.
And then once you get to round 25, that is when the moon Easter egg has been completed. Richtofen does take control and the zombie's eyes will switch over to blue and Richtofen will be the announcer. There is also the bunker easter egg. If you come over to the bunker and you start knifing it, you will hear some audio of Marlton. It's very hard to hear, so you want to have your audio settings just right. But if you do have them set just right, you'll be able to hear some of these quotes. At some point in time, as you are playing Newtown, you will hear the bus horn from Transit in the background. According to the zombies timeline, Russman stole the Transit bus from an abandoned broken arrow facility, and I guess as he was dipping out, he decided to honk it a couple times just, you know, for good luck. Now if you've ever wondered what the zombie counter on the Nuketown sign and the giant clock represent, well this actually is the countdown to the power up change. So in the backyard of this house behind this door there is a power up, and once that clock goes down to zero and the zombie counter goes down to zero, that power up will change and you will hear this noise. That signifies the power up is changing. Now if you don't grab the power up, it will reset so you can get the 100 kills, get the clock down to zero, and the power up will change yet again. But once you grab it, it's done. You can't grab it ever again. I really think they should have had a power up constantly spawning there. I feel like it would have made high rounds for Nuketown a little bit more interesting, especially considering the fact that really the only wonder weapons you have are the ray gun and the ray gun mark II. And there's really no way to determine the whole perk situation. It really is just at random. The only way you'll really know when a perk is coming is when you hear the air raid siren. And then just look up and hope to God that it gives you Jug early on or else you're going to be waiting until the teens to actually get Juggernaut. Another little interesting easter egg is the mailboxes on the ground in the actual playable area have Woods and Mason's names written on them. And if we look outside the map, I believe the names on these mailboxes are from some of the developers that worked on Zombies. And one thing that I've always wanted to know about Nuketown is what this base way out in the distance actually looks like. So I decided to no clip all the way out there and it's really just exactly what you would think it would be, just some base way off in the distance. But I always really wanted to know what it looked like up close and now you know. It's nothing really fascinating or anything like that, but it's still pretty neat. Now the last thing I have for you is the three musical easter eggs on Nuketown. The first one is the most obvious one, the three teddy bear one. The first teddy bear is located on this bunk bed. The other one is located inside of the bus. And the last and final one is located outside of this fence right here. And once you activate all three of those teddy bears, Samantha's lullaby will start playing. The next easter egg is the 8-bit coming home easter egg which was also on moon. All you have to do is shoot off every single mannequin's head and that can be kind of annoying because I feel like every time I try to do this I always forget one. But once you get all of them shot off this song will start playing. The last and final musical easter egg is an 8-bit version of Damned called Redamned, which also happened to be on Moon. Once the population counter gets down to 15, so don't get any lower or any higher, exactly 15, go over to the power-up drop and grab it. And as soon as you grab it, this musical easter egg will start playing. Jumping over to Mob of the Dead, did you guys know about Mob of the Dead's secret ending? Once you spawn in on Mob of the Dead, don't move a muscle. Don't look around, don't try to move, don't try to shoot. Just sit completely still and let yourself bleed out in the afterlife mode. 
Once you do bleed out, you will get a different ending from the one you usually get, and it goes a little something like this. So that Samantha's lullaby makes yet a, another return. Now you guys probably know about the jump scare easter egg. You take a sniper rifle up to the roof, you look over at the fireworks, and you get this jump scare. But did you know about the secret jump scare easter egg? That is so rare that a majority of the zombie community has never seen it. All you have to do is be playing on Mob the Dead. You cannot be on the Golden State Bridge. You have to have some background lightning being played, and you have to have the plane zapped. Now, once you have met all of those conditions, you also have to get extremely lucky. I think it's like a one in 100,000 chance that this is actually gonna happen if you have met all of those conditions. But if you happen to meet those conditions, this is what it's gonna look like. It's very, very fast. It's hard to notice, but there is a second jump scare. I am that Michael made an entire video going into more detail about more of that. So if you wanna know more about these scary lightning jump scare Easter egg, go watch his video. He goes way more in depth. On Mob of the Dead, you can also grab the Silver Spork and the Golden Spork. To do this, you have to have at least visited the Golden State Bridge at least once, must be playing on original difficulty, have the Hell's Retriever and or Hell's Redeemer, and have the Assegat and or Vitriolic Withering. Step 1, you want to come over to this jail cell and toss your Tomahawk over at it, taking down the poster and revealing the hole in the wall. Step 2, go into Afterlife, go around the corner, come right up to the spoon and zap it, you will hear a laugh knowing that you did it correctly. Step three, come into the cafeteria, toss the tomahawk over at the spoon, and you will hear this Brutus quote. And that will give you the silver spoon. Next step, go up to the infirmary and go up to this lone bathtub and interact with it. Once you do, a silver spoon will appear and start stirring the blood. Next up, go down to the showers and get about 50 to 70 kills with the Assegat and or Vitriolic Withering. You will hear that mystery box-esque laugh once you are done. And as soon as you're done, you want to head right back up to the infirmary, interact with that bathtub again, and you will be given the Golden Spork. It's really very easy to do, and all you really need is the Assegat and the Hell's Redeemer, and you can get it pretty quick. Speaking of Easter eggs, there is a 115 Easter egg on this map. Normally, you would interact with this to get the part for the plane, but instead of putting on the numbers for that, if you activate 115, this will happen. I don't think so. One cool part about Mob of the Dead is the perks kind of do have a jingle and have their own sounds that's vastly different than all the other zombie maps. I found a really cool video that catalogs all of those sounds and I'm gonna let you guys listen to it. I know a lot of people might not like hearing stuff like this, but I find things like this fascinating that normally you would never know about zombies unless somebody just pointed it out.
One thing that I didn't know before I was making this video is right outside of spawn, normally where you toss the Hell's Retriever to upgrade it, if you toss your grenades in, you're going to get 20 points. I never knew this until I started researching for this video, but yeah, you just toss some grenades down there and it'll give you 20 points for each grenade. I never knew that until now. Pretty cool. There's also a lot of traps located around the map, and one cool thing about the traps is it says Zombie Ink written on the traps. Like I usually say, nothing to do with anything, but still interesting. Also in Mob of the Dead, when the players go down and as they are bleeding out, they start to talk to themselves, and each character has a variety of quotes for this, and I'll let you listen to some of them right now. Everything here is just a numbers game, isn't it, Finn? Just like back outside. All those years at the track, waiting till the last second before you lay down the cash that would swing the odds in your favor. Every time you took it right down to the wire, you're used to taking chances, aren't you, Finn? There's no thrill like it, is there? What now, though? Ain't no playback operations gonna change the odds here. Are you still a betting man, Finn? Wanna bet on how all this will end? He was an actress, Finn. Saying things she didn't mean was a way of life to her. She never loved you. She was only interested in what you could do for her. Not only did you marry her, but you let her know the ins and outs of your business. You shared details, Finn, and you should have known better. Secrets are there for a reason, pal. It's always the dames, isn't it, Finn? Like they got a fucking sixth sense that leads them right into your blind spot. But Angela... How fucking stupid can you get? It's always the dames, isn't it, Finn? Like they got a sixth sense that leads them right into your blind spot. But Angela, wow, how stupid can you get? You're a smart guy, aren't you, Finn? Smarter than the others, for sure. But what about Angela? Your beautiful wife. She had it all figured out. And you didn't even see it coming. You killed before, Finn, but it was always business. Not this time, though, pal. Angela will be different. She deserves it. Doesn't she, Finn? She knew all the cards to play and all the buttons to press, didn't she? That little bitch. Rejection hurts, but it's not the worst thing, is it, Albert? What really hurts is to be ignored. You know how that feels better than anyone, don't you? Sure. They want your skills, your expertise, but only on their terms. They don't care what else you have to offer, how different you could be, if only they noticed you. Is that why you lie to them? Why you promise things you can't deliver? Be careful, Al. One day your promises may come back and bite you. Are you scared, Al? You should be. If they don't already suspect you, they will soon. And then what? What will you do when the truth's revealed? When your whole house of cards comes tumbling down, will you confess? Or will you run? Where will you run, Albert? All around the mulberry bush? There's nowhere to run. Nowhere to hide. You know, there's only one way. This is gonna end, Al. Poor, poor weasel. They all look at you the same way, don't they, Al? They don't see a man when they look at you, oh. They see a weasel, a rat. You're a survivor, Al. No shame in that. Even a rat survives. You can take it, whatever they throw you away. Still, wouldn't you like to know what it feels like to be respected? Just imagine what you would do if you had the power that they had. You'd have to show them, Al. You'd have to show them just what the weasel was really capable of. You worked hard to get where you were, Sal. All those years, pulling and pushing those guys into shape. Teaching them the value of respect. You had to kiss ass to all those creeps in City Hall, the mayor's office, and worst of all, Chicago's finest. They were all too happy to take your money. Kickback after kickback, bribe after bribe. Where were they when you really needed them? You worked hard to get where you were, Sal, but that was the outside. Where you were. It ain't where you are now. What do you think will be waiting for you when you get out, Sal? You think the city will be just as you left it? Can you trust your lieutenants to keep order? 
to keep peace? You know the answer to that, don't you, Sal? You know human nature. You know what greed can do. They'll fight like rats over every scrap of turf, every nickel and dime. The only thing waiting for you is chaos. Is that really what you want? Hey, Sal, what's the matter? You can't escape your own guilt? Do you feel it? Deep down? Nagging? Eating away at you? Hey, Sal, do you still hear her? Does she call to you in the dark of the night? Begging, pleading for you to stop? She was just a young girl. But that didn't stop you, did it, Sal? You only saw blind rage. Your own insecurities boiling over. You really think she deserved it, don't you, Sal? Daddy had no idea, did he, Billy? Just a hard-working Joe. Trying to put food on the table for his wife and son. He thought he was the only one bringing money into the house. He had no idea what was really going on. You knew, didn't you? You saw and you heard everything. Even as a lost little boy, you knew what the truth would do if it ever came out. It had to end sometime, Billy. You just happened to be the one who ended it. It's ironic, isn't it, Billy? The harder you try not to feel anything, the more it actually hurts. You used to think you could push it all onto someone else. Someone who actually deserved it. So many victims. So much pain. But you can't push it away, can you? Even when you hurt others, it doesn't make it stop, does it? You ought to just accept what you are, Billy. A monster. You always seem like such a sweet boy, Billy. Losing your mother must have been so hard for you. So young. So beautiful. Everyone told you how brave you were. Everyone but your father. Do you think he knew the truth, Billy? What really went on in that cold, dark heart of yours? Now, have you ever wanted a free Blundergat and or free Assagat? Well, you're in luck. All you need is the Hell's Retriever. There's going to be five skulls located around the map. You pick up each one of these skulls with the Hell's Retriever and then go over to the Warden's Office and you will get a free Blundergat and or Assagat. These can be grabbed in any particular order. The first one is going to be up top on the roof over near the jump scare easter egg. The next couple are going to be down by the docks. This one is going to be located right next to Juggernaug. This one, in my opinion, is the hardest one to hit. The next one is going to be over near PHD Flopper. Next up is located right outside of spawn on this toilet. And the last and final one is located outside of the warden's office up on this pole. Once you have grabbed all five of those, you just want to be in the warden's office and a Assagat and or Blundergat will appear. Now, say you already have the Blundergat in your inventory. This will give you a free Assagat, so you can have both the Blundergat and Assagat at the same time. Also in the Warden's Office, there is the Tower of Babel picture, the same very one that we have seen in Transit, located right here next to Speed Cola. Always love the good old references to previous maps. One cool thing in Spawn is, if you look on the bookshelves, there's a lot of random books, but one book in particular that I found very, very funny is the Alcatraz Swim Team Yearbook. I don't know why, but the thought that Alcatraz has a swim team, not only that they have a swim team, but they also have a yearbook for it, is absolutely hilarious, so I just had to point that out for you guys. Now let's see who remembers this. Leading up to the Mob of the Dead release, in the main menu on Black Ops 2, they would give you updates and previews for the upcoming DLCs, and one of the things that they eventually gave us was Al's Journal, and it reads, I've completed the aircraft schematics using only components that I know can be found within the grounds. However, everything hinges on gaining the trust and help of some of the facility's most notorious residents. They may make fun of me sometimes, but they know I can do anything if I set my mind to it. I've planned enough jobs for them in the past to know that I can convince them to join me as Icarus takes flight. Speaking of Icarus, same old story. The editor defaced my art scrawling nasty little comments on every page. When I get out, I'll show him how wrong he is. And speaking of throwbacks, do you guys remember this still image? This was one frame of the Mob of the Dead trailer, and it's really, really creepy because it's not like an in-game shot. It's just a teddy bear in a jail cell, and just looking at this image by itself is very, very unsettling. Located down by the docks, you have all of these crates, and on the cover of the crates, it says Zombie Shipping. I always love when Treyarch adds little stuff like this, like the trap saying Zombie Ink, and this saying Zombie Shipping. It's just nice little cute things like that that I really enjoy. 
located around mob of the dead there are numerous ciphers and thank god there's smarter people out there than me because i would never be able to do any of this but the first cipher reads when i realized that the current lack of cooperation from chicago's finest leaves us at something of a disadvantage I find your latest report extremely troubling. The alliance that exists between our outfit and the Northside gangs must be sustained. At least we face a repeat of February 19th, 1929. Cypher 2 reads, The answer is simple. No divorce. No matter what ideas Angela may have about making a new life, she needs to understand it's not going to happen. I didn't pluck her pretty little tush from course line obscurity just so she can turn around and screw me as soon as the times get tough. No divorce. She can leave this marriage the day she leaves the earth. Cypher 3. I know it's been a long time, but I wanted to write you just so you know I'm doing well. It's been a long time coming, but I finally managed to make a success of myself in the city. Work's been good to me these past few years, so much that I decided to take a little bit of time off. I'll write you again when I get back to work. Maybe I'll even send you some pictures. Cypher 4. Enclosed are some more recent illustrations of my proposed comic strip, Icarus from Mars. While I understand that you were less than enthusiastic about my previous submissions, I would urge you to look again with fresh eyes. Laid up in the hospital means I've had more time than even to devote to my craft, and my artwork is improving by leaves and bounds. Eagerly awaiting your response, Albert Arlington. And the last cipher reads, Urgent the Giant is in France. And throughout the ciphers in the journal, they've always referenced this comic. Well, if you get all of the torn comic parts put together, you get this image. And just as he said, there is tons of criticism littered all over this. He was not a happy camper. Around Mob of the Dead, there are numerous regulation signs talking about different things. Yard privileges, clothing, complaints, dining room recreations. There are tons of them, but the one that sticks out is Regulation 666. And this one is called Deal With It. Do not get too close. They are not your friends. Destroy their brains for quick extermination. If you are bitten, please kill yourself. And that one is just a little bit different than all of the other regulations. Last but not least is the music easter egg Rusty Cage by Johnny Cash. This is activated by hitting three bottles scattered throughout the map. The first one is in the spawn area, the next one is in the infirmary, and the last and final one is down by the docks. Once you activate all three, this song will start playing. Where the hell is that music coming from? Also, you can activate the song Where Are We Going by Kevin Sherwood by inputting the numbers 935. Now on to everybody's favorite cowboy map, Buried. On Buried, there are two different ways to get a free perk. The first one is the obvious one during the ghosty witch round, the waifu round, whatever you wish to call this boss zombie. You can start this by going through the mansion when all of the lights are on and this will initiate the round. Just exit the mansion and kill all of the ghosts and you will get a free perk. The other way is just as simple. All you need is the ballistic knives, head to the saloon, stand at this line because you know we're not cheaters, get a bullseye on the dartboard. Now all you have to do is head to the witch's mansion, run all the way through it, exit it, and then re-enter it and come right up to this witch who happens to be playing the piano. And you just have to leave a tip, be a nice patron for the ghostly witch person, and they will reward you with a free perk. Now, the interesting thing about this is that song she's playing on the piano is loosely based on Damned and Always Running. And I'll let you listen to it right now because usually you would probably never pay any attention to this whatsoever.
And speaking of Easter eggs, depending on which Easter egg route you went for Black Ops 2, whether it was Richtofen or Maxis, you will get a different song for each person. After you have completed the Easter egg for Maxis, you will get Samantha's Desire. And if you completed it for Richtofen, you will get Richtofen's Delight. Let's switch it up a little bit. Let's talk about the fridge and bank. The fridge and bank are very easy to get to. You can actually get to the bank without having to open any doors. All you have to do is run like all the way around the map, but trust me, it's just way easier to open the door. And the fridge is just right around the corner from the bank. And the interesting thing about the fridge is you can put your weapons in there, but say you put the Python in there on transit and you try to take it out on buried, you will be rewarded with, wait for it, the Remington New Model Army. Now, unfortunately, if you put the New Model Army in the fridge and try to take it out on Die Rise, you will get the Python. So map specific weapons do not transfer over. Now, as you make your way through the mansion, you will see a picture of this dude. And you might be like, why is this dude so popular? Why is there like 15 portraits of him just like hanging around? Well, this is a very real scientist called Michael Faraday. And he goes down in history as one of the more famous scientists. Now I am completely stupid so i can't really dive too deep into all the discoveries that he made but let me just put it this way he was so influential that albert einstein kept a picture of this dude on his wall but if you want to know more about fair days and his paradoxes you can go look it up and try to understand it because i'm way too dumb for that and speaking of the mansion if you're walking around outside of it you can hear the ghostly witch start whispering at you and creepily telling you that you're pretty much gonna die here and like never leave it's really creepy and i love it you know And speaking of creepy sounds, when you're walking through the mine shafts, at one point you can hear what sounds like footsteps running really fast and some creepy laughter. Again, I love when Treyarch does stuff like this. I love creepiness and zombies. I don't like giant tentacle space sentai monsters, but I do love creepiness. With Buried, we got introduced to Leroy. I refuse to call him Arthur. His name is not Arthur, goddammit, it's Leroy. And with Leroy, you can do a lot of different things with him. You can give him booze to knock down barricades and open up perks for you, or you can give him candy and he can do a lot of different things. Now everybody knows about giving candy next to zombies, he'll go crazy, but if you give candy next to a crawler, he will pick it up and baby it. No longer do we need to have a crawler bitch, which is somebody that has to watch the crawler while everybody else gets to go Easter egg hunt. Now you can just give it to him and he'll do it for you. 
If you give him candy next to a workbench, he'll go off and find all the parts and then build it right there for you. If you give him candy next to the mystery box, he can slam it down so it doesn't leave. Or if it's next to an empty mystery box, he'll go and find it. Or say you didn't like the gun that you got at the mystery box, give him candy and he'll change it for you. He can do so many things and that's not the end of it. Say you have a subsurface resonator down and you give him candy next to it, he will go out, find the workbench where the turbine has been built, grab you a turbine and bring it back to you and set it down. If that's not dedication, I don't know what is. He can also change power-ups to be completely random, and if you give him candy next to the chalk at the gunsmith shop, he will go and place them off for you. This dude definitely deserves more than minimum wage. He is going above and beyond for you. And kind of piggybacking off of everything that he can do, he can also open the teleporter for you. So if you have booze, give him booze, he will destroy this fountain. That's the first thing you need to do. Good. Go through the witch's mansion into the maze and come up to this fountain right here in the maze and throw all your explosives at it or shoot it with a ray gun. Basically just blow it the hell up with something explosive. Now, if you have destroyed both fountains, now you have a portal. You can jump through this fountain and it will take you back to spawn. So now instead of running all the way through the witch's mansion, you can just jump through here and bam, you're at spawn. And one little funny thing that I found while I was searching around the map was a bunch of books scattered all throughout this map. And they're all just the same copy and paste book. There's like Frankenstein, uh, Grimm's Fairy Tales. But one that I found very, very funny was Alcatraz Swim Team Yearbook. It makes a return. You thought we were only ever going to see an Alcatraz. Well, no, because that Swim Team Yearbook is going to follow us wherever we go now. It's huge. It's crucial to the Easter egg. And by that, I mean, it's just copy and paste and they just need to add more books to the shelves. But I still thought it was pretty funny that the Alcatraz swim team yearbook found its way to Buried. And honestly, I think they just need to keep like randomly hiding that yearbook in random zombie maps from now on because it's hilarious. Now, in case you didn't know, Buried is based off a real life ghost town. It's actually based off the Calico ghost town all the way out in ugh, disgusting California. It was founded in 1881 as a silver mining town and was later converted to a county park named the Calico ghost town. And forever ago, Treyarch went out there, surveyed the ghost town and said, hey, we're going to make a zombie map based off of this. And they did. And that's not the only thing they took from this. Knowing that this is a ghost town, I'm assuming they thought, hey, let's make a ghost boss zombie. And thus we have the witch, the ghost, the waifu, whatever you want to call it and buried. Now, Calico has many of ghosts, hence it being referred to as a ghost town. And one of the more famous ghosts is named Lucy Lane, and she seems to be the inspiration for the ghost that we have in Buried. And Lucy ran one of Calico's general stores alongside her husband, John Robert Lane. Her former home is now a museum dedicated to her and her husband, and she is sometimes seen sitting in a rocking chair, slowly rocking back and forth. And the nail in the coffin for me is that she was buried in a black lace dress. Do you know who else has a black lace dress? So I'm not saying she was definitely the inspiration for the ghost because there's like a lot of ghosts and they were probably all morphed into one, but I would say this one is the biggest one. And the last cool thing from real life that Buried has is the hedge maze. This hedge maze and Buried is based off the very real Kaiser Memorial Maze, which I believe is in St. Louis, which is a real life maze and they look oddly similar. Not oddly similar, they are very similar because they are the same thing. So if you ever want to check out the Buried hedge maze in real life, check out the Kaiser Memorial Maze. And the last thing I got for you guys on Buried is the music Easter egg. There's going to be three teddy bears located around the map, hitting them in any particular order. The first one is going to be in the Witch's Mansion, right over there next to a Double Tap. The next one is going to be in a barrel in the candy store. And the last and final one is up near Quicker Vibe. Hit all of them and Always Running will start playing. Music soothes the savage beast. <laughs> Do any of these beasts look soothed to you? I don't think so. Let's end this video off on Origins. Did you know that there is a jump scare on Origins? Once you have the excavation site opened up and you have a sniper rifle with a scope, you want to take a nice little pretty look over here at the fire on the church and this will happen. Now you probably knew about going prone in front of perks giving you 25 points, but did you also know that you can go prone in front of Pack-a-Punch to get 25 free points? It's not a lot, but if you do it to all the perks, it kind of adds up a little bit. Now, I know you're probably thinking to yourself, that's interesting and all, but how do I get the walls to not fall in the crazy place? Well, there's two different ways. One, you could do the entire Easter egg minus the last step, which is kind of a huge pain in the ass, especially on solo. Or two, if you don't pick up any of the crystals when you go there, the walls won't fall. Once you pick up one of those crystals, that's what triggers the walls to start coming down. So if you really like the open area and you can deal without having a staff, then that's probably your best option. 
But say you're like, hey, I want to do the Easter egg. Let's get it done. Well, at some point, you're going to need a zombie blood. And there is a way to get a free zombie blood. There are three carriages on fire around the excavation site. All you have to do is put the fire out with the ice staff and a free zombie blood will spawn up next to pack a punch on the top of the excavation site. And you are able to do this once per round. So try not to f it up. Now there is a way to get a cool golden shovel and a golden helmet in origin. All you have to do is grab the regular shovel and dig up 30 dig sites and eventually you will get the golden shovel. And if you continue digging up more and more stuff, you will get the golden helmet. And the golden helmet will make sure that you don't die if those robots step on you. And it really takes no skill at all to get. It's literally just a matter of time. And speaking of the golden shovel, you're going to need that for this next bit. If you were wanting to get more than four perks, well, five considering double tap, but we'll talk about that here in a second. If you were wanting to get as many perks as you want, there is a way to do it. Once you have the golden shovel and you get a zombie blood, you want to real quick run around the map. What you're looking for is an orange dig pile, which you can only see in zombie blood. And if you're able to find it and dig it up, you will be rewarded with a free perk drop. Now, this drop does not give you a perk, but gives you a free perk slot so you can fill it with whatever you want. But say you were really wanting an upgraded MG-08. Well, do I have some good news for you? There is a way to get one. Once you have the Maxis drone, you want to take him to four different locations around the map. The first one is going to be right outside of spawn. There's a yellow little dot over there that you want to release him, let him go hump, and then on to the next one. The next one is across from Stamina Up, right up here on that ledge. The next one is outside of the church as soon as you exit the robot's footpath. And the last and final one is opposite side of Pack-a-Punch. You do not have to do these in any particular order. And if you do it really fast, you're only going to need one Maxis drone. And once you have collected all four of them, a free upgraded MG-08 will be waiting for you right in front of Pack Punch. But say you were wanting like free double tap or a different gun. Well, if you do a couple of the challenges from the starting room, you'll be able to get it. Or you could collect them near Generator 6, but that's a death sentence. Now, if you get 115 headshots, you will get a free Pack Punch Assault Rifle. If you spend 30,000 points, you'll get free double tap. If you capture all six generators, that's going to give you a free max ammo. And if you fill all four of the soul chests, you will get the punchy punchy melee weapon, which is used for the Easter egg. So I'm not going to talk too much about that. Now, everybody probably knows that there's three giant robots that walk through the map and terrorize you to all hell. But did you know that these three robots do have names? They are in order from left to right, Freya, Odin, and Thor. And they are named after three gods from Norse mythology. And one interesting little tidbit about that, there is a fallen robot over near Generator 2, and the common theory that I keep seeing is that this one was going to be called Loki. There is no proof for that whatsoever, considering Loki was the Norse god of mischief, and this robot was over here dicking around, falling down, it kind of makes a little, a little sense maybe? I don't know, but that's the theory I'm going to go with. That robot is called Loki. Now one cool thing about Origins is if you happen to stand around Pack Punch for a while, you're going to hear some very unique sounds that you ordinarily would probably completely ignore. Once you have zombie blood activated, you will hear a lot of creepy whispering and sounds. Now also continuing with the audio trend, did you know that the Maxis drone actually has a lot of quotes? Maxis is a very talkative guy. I picked some of the more interesting ones and I'm gonna force you to listen to him. Samantha, I must go to her. No, Edvar, no! Samantha must be found. Oh, at last, the darkness is at an end. I live again. I knew my friend would not fail me. Something is wrong. I can no longer touch, no longer feel. What have you done, Rektofen? We must free Samantha from her prison. The girl is the key. The paradox must be resolved. The loop must be closed. Where is Samantha? Does she still call out for help? 
Your actions have endangered us all, Avar. Now, Origins also has its fair amount of ciphers. This one is located in the workshop and it reads, Though Edward's work was integral to our initial analysis of Divinium, the rift between us grows deeper each day. I fear his loyalties lay with only Group 935 and their insatiable desire for yet more devastating weaponry. I myself can no longer continue on this path in all conscience. Though my actions will inevitably be viewed as treason, I am more concerned with just how Edward will react when I tell him of my contact with the Allies. The next one is located in the giant robot Thor. The breadth of the ancient's knowledge is humbling. I find myself questioning not only my understanding of the scientific world, but also the true nature of the universe itself. For the first time in my adult life, I find myself open to the possibility of a higher power. The next cipher is located in the church. From his very first day studying at Heidelberg, Edward displayed an intellect and maturity well beyond his years. However, the impact of his parents' death has affected him deeply. Though I have tried to provide him with some sort of a father figure, I fear his choices may be increasingly influenced by his newfound friends within group 935. The next one is located in the staff's room and it reads, I know some would think of me mad, but I am nevertheless forced to conclude that Samantha herself may be the key to everything. For reasons that I am struggling to comprehend, it appears that she somehow holds domain over this realm. After you've upgraded all the staves and you place the fire staff in the fifth pedestal, you're going to get some Morse code. And the Morse code reads, Warn messiness. Something blue in the earth, not clay. We grew weak, thought it was flu. Men become beast. Blood turned to ash. Liberate tutte de infernus. I think that's how you pronounce it. Probably not. And that is Latin and that translates to free yourself from hell. And lastly, we have some scraps of paper that when you collect them all and put them together, you get this beautiful image. Now, you probably knew about one or two of the Origins Easter eggs, but did you know for Black Ops 2 that there's actually three? The first one is Archangel, and this one is activated by hitting those three glowing green rocks around the map. First one is in Spawn, second one is in the Workshop, and the third and final one is up next to the Excavation Site. And once you have activated all three, Archangel will start playing. Now the next one is the intro song, Shepherd of Fire. This one is activated by hitting three red radios around the map. The first one is located on the scaffolding in the excavation site. The next one is inside of the giant robot Freya, which was over near the church. And the last and final one is to the left side of the fire area in the crazy place. Once you hit all three, this copyright song will start playing. Now the last and final musical easter egg is called Ether, and this one is activated by hitting 115 around the map. So you want to go over to generator 1. There are two 1 panels on the ground. You want to go prone in front of each one and interact with it. You will hear a sound telling you that you did it. And once you have gotten both of those ones, you want to head over to generator 5, make sure it's turned on, go prone in front of the 5, interact with it, and this song will start playing. Now you probably know this, but the perks on Origins don't really have jingles, but occasionally you can hear them whistle, and when you buy them, a unique little whistle slash sound will be played. Now I wish they would have done more with zombie blood because if you go to the crazy place and you get zombie blood on this wall you can see a message that says follow the steps. And it really sucks that they didn't really do too much with this and this is really all we got. One of the more funny things is on the giant robot's backs there is a very well there's two very crudely drawn trains for literally no reason. It's so cute and adorable I just absolutely love it. Now, in case you didn't know, PhD Flopper is in Black Ops 2. It's just in Origins, and you have to get it through the Wonderfizz machine. It is very, very rare, 
but it's not as rare as quick revive both of those can be got through the wonder fizz but you're going to be hitting it for a while. Now, there is a replacement for monkey bombs called the G-Strike Bombs, and it's really easy to get, and I would recommend you do this the earlier the better. Over near Generator 2 on this table, there's going to be some tablets. You want to pick up the tablet, take it to the church, put it in this little makeshift bird feeder, get a bunch of melee kills next to it until it says you're done. Pick it back up and take it all the way back to Generator 2, but you cannot touch any of the mud, so just walk on the wood path the entire time. Place it back down on the table, get a bunch more melee kills until it tells you you're done, and then finally pick up your G-Strike Bombs. You only get two of them, and they're pretty powerful, and you need it for the Easter egg, so you might as well. Now I guess to end this video off, we'll go with one of my favorite little tidbits about Origins, and it's actually pretty helpful. If you have the Panzer spawning in, and also have a giant robot walking towards you, if you can get the giant robot to step on the Panzer, and you have the golden helmet, or you're able to skedaddle out of there, that Panzer is going to get stuck in the ground, and will make for a very, very easy kill. Now because I love you guys, I'm going to throw in a bonus. This is a Black Ops 1 exclusive bonus. I have no idea how I forgot this in the previous video, but this will literally change the way you play 5. Down in the labs, if you find yourself dying a lot, with this one simple trick, doctors will hate you. You can shoot out these windows once you have bought the doors to them, and you can hop through them. So no more do the zombies have to block the doorway. You can hop in and out of the windows to just avoid that whole mess, and it can save you a lot of time and frustration. Just remember that you can do it because it will save your life. So that is going to be the video. Hopefully you guys learned a bunch of new information. And if you guys did, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and turn notifications on. So that way you guys always get notified when these big videos drop. And that is all I got for you guys today. So hopefully you guys have a fantastic day. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.